My name is Mark Feinberg. I'm President and Chief Executive Officer of the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, which is headquartered in New York. There's been tremendous progress in the fight against HIV, as you know, since the disease was first identified in 1981, at a time when people thought that it would be untreatable and hopeless. There's been significant advancements in developing highly effective therapies that now provide the opportunity for infected people to live long, healthy lives with a normal lifespan. But one of the challenges has been, even though progress has been made in the treatment front, um, preventing new infections has not been as successful. And it's clearly recognized that we need new interventions, especially a vaccine if we're ever going to truly end AIDS. Um, yet developing an HIV vaccine is probably the biggest uh, challenge that biomedical science has taken on. Um, the virus is very diverse from a genetic point of view. Um, it has the ability to establish persistent infections that the immune system is not able to clear on its own. And both of those characteristics um, distinguish it from diseases for which we have vaccines that are effective. So to develop an HIV vaccine, we have to do something that is fundamentally better than what the body's immune system does on its own. And that has been a major challenge, which is why it's taken as long as it has to develop an HIV vaccine. Um, the good news is that tremendous scientific progress has been made in this front, and lots of new technologies that are very powerful have been applied to this problem to better understand what kinds of immune responses would be necessary to prevent infection. You know, what are the vulnerable parts of the virus that can be used as targets for effective vaccines? And those concepts have really given rise to fundamental improvements in how we think about vaccine development broadly. And there are new approaches which were pioneered in the fight against HIV that are identifying ways of developing new vaccine components that will elicit specific types of immune responses. And those are now being deployed and they're entering clinical trials in people in the next couple months, um, which we're very excited about. And those are intended to elicit antibody responses in people who are not infected to prevent them from getting infected. And those antibodies um, will ideally be very broad in their ability to recognize diverse HIV variants. So there's a lot of excitement about that. Um, there's also a lot of other promising interventions emerging, um, including the ability of using long-acting antiretroviral drugs that might be able to be administered once every month or once every few months, as well as tools that emerged from the HIV vaccine effort, so-called broadly neutralizing monoclonal antibodies, which um, have been identified, which there's the hope that those would be able to, when administered to people who are not infected with HIV, protect them from HIV. So there's a lot going on. It's a very dynamic area, and while it's been a long process, I think the pace of discovery um, is accelerating. Um, well, you know, HIV has been a major focus of investment, and I think it's fair to say that uh, the level of investment in HIV research is probably greater than any other infectious disease um, in recent history. And it is true that the continued investment has come under threat, and I think it just means that it's very important for all of us to make the case about why we continue to need to make progress on HIV and why the fight against HIV is going to give us tools that will protect us against other emerging infectious diseases. Well, I mean, India has a number of attributes that are of critical importance here. One, as you know, India has a significant HIV problem itself, and it's taken significant efforts to try to address that, which is very encouraging. So 
India as a country has shown leadership in terms of taking on their own national HIV problem. From a other standpoint, though, India has also played a leadership role in um, the pharmaceutical industry, in particular the generic manufacturers, making low-cost antiretroviral drugs be available around the world, and it's the major producer of drugs that are used to treat people um, all around the world, which is a tremendous contribution. Importantly, when we think about future tools for prevention, whether it's biologics like broadly neutralizing antibodies or vaccines, India really has the strong potential to be not only a supplier of those products globally, but also playing an increased role in innovation and bringing you know, new technologies, new approaches to bear on solving these issues. So I think in many ways, India has a very critical role to play. Well, there are a number of important ways for India to um, engage. You know, at the pharmaceutical industry, the biotechnology industry that's emerging, the well-established um, vaccine manufacturing industry, um, the very strong scientific community that's in India, um, they have really critical roles to play in the fight against HIV and other um, emerging infectious diseases. But I think there are opportunities for them to be better connected to the global uh, level of activity, whether it's in other countries where the disease burden is great, such as in Africa, or you know, centers of scientific innovation, such as um, some of the laboratories we run in the United States, you know, figuring out how to bring together um, the different partners to enable um, things to be achieved through collaborations that cannot be achieved through individual organizations. I mean, that's a primary driver for us, and we believe that strengthening that connection with India, you know, ourselves and doing all we can to facilitate India's better connection with the rest of the world and the rest of the scientific community where we have the ability to help um, is something that's very important to us. So facilitating partnerships is at the heart of what we do. We work across the continuum of vaccine development. So we start with the communities who are either infected with HIV or at risk of HIV infection. We engage with them very early on in the process so they understand you know, the nature of the research and they understand why research is being done and the role that they have to play in it. But we take knowledge that we can learn from studying them to develop scientific insights that can then be transformed into ideas about product development that will hopefully give us the products that ultimately need to come back to those at-risk communities. And there, too, we work with them to understand what are their preferences, what are the attributes of products that would be relevant to meet their needs in the healthcare systems that, that serve them. And if, if groups or individuals are divorced from that process, there's the concern that there will be distrust emerge. But if they're engaged at every stage, we believe that it significantly addresses concerns about trust and hopefully will you know, have the interventions we develop in partnership with others be readily accepted and embraced by them.